Hello, people of the internet. My name is Johnny, and welcome back to yet another FNAF news video. Today, we're talking about FNAF Plus. It's been a good while since we last brought up FNAF Plus here on the channel, and that's because development has been kind of quiet. Which is understandable if you don't know Fiznom, who is the creator of FNAF Plus, said a while back that he doesn't want to reveal too, too much. He doesn't want to put out as many teasers or trailers, for example, until the game is getting very close to complete. However, of course, that doesn't mean we don't have any news to talk about. Because very recently on Twitter, he posted some possible UI designs that will appear in the game. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at all of those designs, as well as a bit more info that he revealed. So if you're excited for the brand new FNAF Plus info, hit the like button, subscribe so you stay up to date with all the FNAF news here on the channel, and let's hop into it. So very quickly, if you don't know, FNAF Plus is a official reimagining, I'm pretty sure is the word filled likes to use. It's not quite a remake, it's a reimagining based off of how Phil would, you know, reimagine the first game. It's a part of the Fazbear Fanverse initiative, it's gonna be ported to platforms, and it's gonna hopefully get merchandise in the future. And of course, the main thing, it is officially funded and kind of looked after by Scott, even though he's not directly helping with the making of the game. So technically, it's a official FNAF reimagining, and we have Phil Morg developing the game. And recently, Phil has asked for the input of the fan base to to determine what UI designs the game will have, and we finally have some answers, and we have some UIs to take a look at. This first tweet isn't about the UIs, but it is about changing the variables and UIs that can appear in the game. He said, I want to turn hard-coded variables of FNAF Plus into config options that you can modify. For example, the intensity of the screen warp, the vertical movement, the scrolling speeds, fog, lighting, and particles, etc. Are there any things in FNAF games you wish you could change on a settings menu? So just some features you can toggle on and off or adjust via a slider. It's not clear which one it will be. We don't know exactly what we're going to be able to toggle or change via a settings menu in the game. I think those examples that Phil brought up are most likely going to be in there. Some other options that got brought up in the replies that Phil responded to were moving the HUD and also being able to adjust or just straight up turn turn off the static in the game. So now moving on to the actual user interface of the game, Phil made this tweet. Still working on the final UI for FNAF Plus. Finish the concept mockups for a default UI and the classic UI. Both options will be accessible from the options menu. Going to work on four more bonus styles and let people pick their two favorite ones as bonus options soon. So what you're seeing right now is the concept for a default UI in the office. It's also worth noting that Phil said, please note that some elements of the UIs have been removed in these images to avoid spoilers. Only the elements already present in the original FNAF were included. So in this image, you can see you have a 12 a.m. clock at the top right, as well as the day of the week. Bottom left, you have the power meter and the power usage, and of course the camera button that you press on or just hover over to open the cameras. And based on that other tweet, I have a feeling that there are definitely going to be some other UIs in the game that we're just not seeing right now. But yeah, technically this is our first look at gameplay, if you want to call it that. It's pretty simple, it's just some basic UI elements with the office blurred out. But you can still make out the office. You can see the desk in front of you and the two doors to your side. And this is a mock-up of the default UI for the cameras. Now Phil does slightly update the UI for the default option that we're going to take a look at in a second. But this would be where the cameras are located on the map. You can see you have quite a few cameras. So it looks like you have one camera in every major room and two in the dining room. I'm going to take a guess and assume that 1A is the entrance to the pizzeria. Cam 2 is going to be the show stage. Cam 3, I would assume, is some sort of backstage or back room area. Cam 5 is obviously the bathrooms. Cam 1C and 1B are the dining room. Cam 4, I would assume is Pirate's Cove. Either it's Pirate's Cove and it's just in a separate room, or it is the prize counter. Because you can see another square that could signify either another stage or a prize counter at the bottom of the dining area. And that is exactly where a prize area is in Help Wanted and FNAF 1. So I would assume that that is the prize area and Pirate's Cove is just in a separate room. Cam 6 looks to be in some sort of supply closet. Interesting that there is also a dot 
in that room because the only other dot on the map is where we are in the office. So what do you think that dot is for? Let me know in the comments down below. Cam 8 appears to be another back room. Cam 10 is most likely the electric room. We know based off a previous teaser that there is a electric room and I believe it was around Cam 10. Cam 7 the kitchen and of course 9A and 9B are the hallways. Now I'm gonna deviate quickly from taking a look at the UI and bring up something interesting. Cam 1B is in the exact location that we see a error message pop up in the connection error teaser video. And that's right after we see Bonnie right in our face in the cameras. So either one, that shot was just made for a creepy shot in the trailer, or B, the animatronics can deactivate our cameras. And we do know that Foxy is linked to the cameras, since we went on a wild goose chase last time taking a look at all the shots that Foxy's in and breaking and entering, and it turns out he's linked to the cameras, so could Foxy be disabling the cameras? It's an interesting thought. Anyways, let's get back to the UIs. So this right here is the quote-unquote classic UI. It's made to look extremely similar to the UI you see in classic FNAF 1. It has that same kind of 8-bit font, you know? And instead of saying Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, etc., it'll say night 1, 2, 3, etc. And in a reply to these tweets, Phil said UI and options are important to enjoying games. And since they don't spoil the experience, I don't mind showing their progress. Currently planning to adjust the usage dots and button sizes for the default UI, plus adding options for left-handed users, plus toggling cam names on or off for visibility. So there you go, you got more options. I love all the options we have in this game. Phil also made a tweet not too long after the first showcase of the UI, updating and adjusting the default UI based on feedback from the last post, simplified vision cone, decreased the size of the usage dots, made the camera button slightly more pleasing to look at. The default UI will will probably change a lot during development. And this is the updated UI for the default UI. Honestly, I love it. I think it looks fantastic. It's also a great callback to the original map UI for FNAF, where the cameras would show what direction they're pointed at. I think that's so cool. And this is the updated power meter. Nice. And now we move on to the four bonus UIs, but only two of them will be added to the game. First up, we have the thin UI, where believe it or not, everything is super thin, very simple. Taking a look at the office, I think the main difference is the power meter and usage down at the bottom. It's all compact into one unit. I think it looks pretty cool. And now I move on to the camera shot for the thin UI. It looks pretty similar to the default UI, except now the names of the cameras, you know, their numbers, don't show up on the icons. The second bonus UI is the night UI. Right, here's a look at the office night UI design. I think it looks pretty sleek, pretty simple, nice and clean. And then this is the camera UI for the night UI design. So it uses the classic FNAF 1 camera icons, and everything has a, you know, dark nighttime black aesthetic to it. The third possible UI for FNAF Plus is the future UI. This is the office. And my oh my do things look sleek. You can see the power meter at the bottom is split into two meters. And this time they're going vertically which is crazy. Never done before in a FNAF game. That, that's absurd, that one, Phil Morg. Honestly, I love the look of the camera UI for the future UI design. I don't know how to describe it. I think it looks cool. Whatever. When you highlight on a, on a camera, it turns green. I like that. That's cool. But yeah, this is the third possible, again, keep in mind possible UIs for FNAF Plus. Only two get to move forward. And this is the fourth and final possible UI. It's called the old school UI. And honestly, this one might be my favorite. It is so sick. It's in that, dare I say, old school Windows, you know, UI. This is the office. Again, I think it just looks so visually appealing. Such a throwback. It looks so sick. And this is what the cameras look like with the old school UI. Again, it just, it looks so cool. I love it so much. But only two of those four options can get in. The thin UI, the nighttime UI, the old school UI, and the third one I'm forgetting. The future UI, that's right. And the two that made it in are the night UI and the old school UI. Now the game will have four different UI styles you'll be able to choose from from the options menu, default, classic, night, and old school. We'll probably work on implementing those next month, currently busy wrangling character animations into the game. So as a reminder, let's take a look at the four UIs that are gonna be in FNAF Plus. First up, you got the default UI. Default UI for the office, 
and default UI for the cameras. Then you have the classic. This is what the office looks like, and this is what the cameras look like. It's meant to mimic the classic FNAF 1 style. Thirdly, you have the night UI. This is what the night UI looks like for the office, and this is what it looks like for the cameras. And finally, you have the old school UI meant to mimic those classic, dare I say again, old school Windows icons. And this is what it looks like for the cameras. But we're not done just yet. Alongside different UIs, I also want to make multiple color schemes for the usage bar plus the options for the active camera's colors. Default red, classic lime green, etc. One of my aims with FNAF Plus is to absolutely overwhelm people with customization options. Phil, I love that. And then he shows off some different color schemes we could get in the game. Just to let you know how in-depth I'm going with options and why FNAF Plus takes so long to make, here are some examples for the UI options. So this is like everything he wants to accomplish with the UI. Four available UI styles, and we already took a look at those. Styles can be mixed and matched for a custom config. Mirror power usage and camera minimap locations. So I think what this means is if you want the camera map on the left instead of the right, you can do that. If you want the power on the left, I mean on the right and not the left, you can do that. Customizable color schemes for usage bar and active camera button. We already took a look at those. Though I don't think that those were the final color schemes, I think that's just to get you an idea for what he means. Enable UI only while looking at the cams, except the panel button. Change the opacity of the UI elements. Though if you don't know what opacity means, it's basically how see-through they are. Minimap can change the opacity if not hovering over it with the mouse. Disable the camera borders for visibility. Disable static, awesome. Scan lines, night labels, and camera labels for visibility. Change the static opacity, again how see-through the static is or not. Enlarge the cam buttons if you hover over them. Change the format of the night labels. So if you want Monday to show up instead of night one, or Tuesday instead of night two, you can do that. It's gonna take a lot to implement all of this, but it'll definitely be worth it. And that is all of the updates we have for FNAF Plus. It's crazy! Just how much is being put into this game, I freaking love it. I never realized just how much I wanted all these, you know, different options in a FNAF game until Phil tweeted all this out, so it's awesome to see that he's really working hard to get a lot of customization in the game. I really appreciate that as a, you know, a fan, a viewer, a player of the game when it comes out. So thank you, Phil, for all of that dedication. That definitely is a lot, but... Uh, hopefully it is worth it. But yes, that is all the updates we have on FNAF Plus for now. Again, there was that whole post bin that I could cover if you guys really want me to. But that's gonna do it for all of the UI and color schemes and all the different options we're talking about in today's video. And thank you, the viewer, for watching. And I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.